You are watching a Russian missile hit a glass pedestrian bridge in downtown Kyiv that had been a popular site for tourists. It's not a bridge that's used by Kyiv's military or by Ukraine's military. It's specifically an area where pedestrians, tourists tend to be. Now, Russian President Vladimir Putin decided to bombard Kyiv with missile strikes in retaliation for Ukraine's explosion of the Crimean bridge over the weekend. The attack by Russia's military was actually so intense and deadly that it's reported to have rivaled the day Russia's invasion started. Now, to give you some more details on this, the strikes targeted critical infrastructure in cities from Kharkiv in the east to Lviv in the west. And also hit in the center of downtown Kyiv, sending civilians racing for shelter. At least five people were killed and at least a dozen others were injured in the Kyiv strikes, Ukraine's national police reported on its Telegram channel. Now, one of the missiles actually ended up landing in a playground that's popular in Kyiv known as Taras Shavenshenko. And Ukraine has asked for additional military assistance to bolster their air defenses. So Ukraine's military reported that its air defenses had knocked down 43 of the 83 missiles that had been launched at the country on Monday. Now, I wanna give you some more details on what led to this, or at least what Putin and the Russian military is claiming this is done in retaliation for. And it has to do with the attack on the Crimean bridge. So let's take a quick look at that video and I'll explain that to you. So the Crimean bridge that the Ukrainian forces blew up is not a popular tourist destination, but rather a strategic piece of Russian military infrastructure. The strikes appear to be a retribution for Saturday's attack on the bridge across the Kerch Strait, which was partially reopened, including to rail traffic. The Crimean Bridge is a strategic, this is important, it's a strategic link between mainland Russia and Crimea, which of course was illegally annexed by Russia and is not recognized internationally as Russian territory. The 12 mile span while used by civilians is a critical military logistics conduit for Russia's military, which is why the Ukrainian military would target the Crimean Bridge. So comparing the uh, tourist slash pedestrian bridge that was targeted by Russians uh, to the Crimean bridge is ridiculous because clearly the Crimean bridge is used specifically uh, as a Im- important piece of military infrastructure for Russia. Yeah, plus it was personal. Uh, so uh, Putin was super proud of that bridge. He was part of the opening ceremony uh, back in 2018. Remember they took Crimea uh, in 2014. That was the original Russian invasion into Ukraine. Uh, and this is the longest bridge in Europe, and and it is definitely used for logistics. Uh, but they did bomb it on Putin's birthday, and then the defense minister for Ukraine sent a video of the mashup of that bridge getting bombed, and Marilyn Monroe singing "Happy Birthday, Mr. President." Okay, so they definitely rubbed his nose in it. Uh, so uh, who struck first in this case? Yes, the Ukrainians hit uh, the bridge in Crimea first. Uh, Does that matter? Absolutely not. Why? Um, Is it because we should be unconcerned about lives lost there? No, no. As I was watching that video, I was thinking, man, those people in those cars, they have no idea, but they're about to die. And so I don't care if they're Russian citizens or even military. I mean, those are human beings there. So it is not really something to celebrate, okay? Uh, Now, so does that mean that it's the Ukrainians' fault? No. The fault of any war is the country that started it, period, right? So for example, we started the war in Iraq, hundreds of thousands of civilians died, that's on us. So if funny enough or horribly enough, Colin Powell, one of the guys who started that war but later regretted it, said if you break it, you own it. And in this case, Putin has broken Ukraine in that he has invaded, he has started killing civilians. And now you look at the bombs that landed in Kyiv and in other Ukrainian cities. So civilians, I saw some of the carnage and we can't show you the dead bodies on the ground, but I saw them and it's a hell of a thing. I mean, Putin made a decision, I'm going to enter this country and I'm going to murder people. Yeah, I mean, that is his MO. I mean, that is what he did in Syria. 
uh, with assisting Bashar al-Assad with, yes, chemical weapons attacks. And for any leftist who's bought into Russian propaganda in questioning the existence of chemical weapons attacks in Syria, um, you've been duped or you are you know, part of the Russian propaganda machine. Uh, but fact of the matter is, if you look at Putin's actions in other conflicts around the world, this is what he does. Yes. This is what he likes to do to bring whoever in his mind he's fighting to their knees. Targeting innocent civilians and and victimizing them uh, through his military action. And to be clear, Putin's been flailing and he's lashing out as a result of that. So as we had shared with you before, Ukraine with the assistance of United States military aid has been able to take back some of the ground that had been lost to the Russian military since the invasion of Ukraine. For instance, in the past six weeks, Ukraine has routed Russian forces from the Northeast Kharkiv region and pushed them back in the Eastern Donbass region and in the Southern Kershaw region. So they're starting to make or take back some of the ground that had been taken from them by the Russian military. Yeah, the problem is we've now entered in a sense a more brutal portion of this invasion and war because it, since it went so poorly, Putin fired the general in charge. He put in a new general, who's that guy? Well, he's the guy who led the campaign in Syria. And what did they do in Syria? Oftentimes, indiscriminate bombing of civilians. So they brought in the hatchet man. Mm-hmm. And, and so some of the most hardline people in Russia and also the leader of Chechnya within Russia um, are all celebrating. They're like, okay, now they love the bombings of Kiev and the other civilian areas. They said, this is how you should conduct a war. Uh, make sure that they understand that we will keep murdering their civilians. Now, the Ukrainians are relentless, so they're going back into the four territories that Russia claims they annexed. So they're not going to stop. And Putin and his hardliners have now moved on to, well, we're going to retaliate by killing even more civilians. So this is going to get, this is going to continue to be super ugly, unfortunately, with a new Kremlin strategy even uglier than before. Yeah, I mean, and, and it doesn't appear that there's any end in sight. And any notion of peace de- a peace deal, a discussion about ending this uh, as soon as possible through some sort of agreement. Uh, seems far-fetched. But at the same time, I should note that Russia has serious core strategic problems, including uh, loss of soldiers, of course, lack of morale among the Russian soldiers. I mean, just think back to when this invasion began, where the soldiers were under the impression that they would be welcomed by Ukrainians, because Ukrainians desperately wanted to be liberated from Ukraine to be part of Russia. Obviously, they were lied to, they were fed propaganda, and many of them got killed as a result of that propaganda. And now you have you know, members of the Russian military trying to dodge having to go to Ukraine. It's been a disaster for them. And repeated logistical failures, we're seeing that as well. But yeah. Putin's not giving up, he just lashes out more in the ways that you described, Jenk. Yeah, last thing is, look, if you see people being apologists for this butcher, Vladimir Putin, understand what their objective is, right? So there's no defense of Putin. In the Before the invasion, you could say, hey, listen, we're encroaching too much into Russian neighboring areas, right? And they're worried, like we were worried about Cuba, they're worried about Ukraine and us putting weapons in there or making it part of NATO. There were legitimate arguments. After the invasion, even though Ukraine said they would not join NATO, which was the ostensible reason Putin was pretending to care, then they made up insane things about the Jewish leader being a Nazi. It's a ridiculous, totally insane, right? So I don't care if you hear it on the right wing or the left wing, it is 100% Propaganda. So if you still see people doing that kind of propaganda, whether it's Tucker Carlson or anyone else pretending to be on the left or otherwise, understand that they're doing propaganda on behalf of this butcher. Every civilian that dies in Ukraine, and by the way, in Russia, and by the way, all the military people, they're also human beings, both in Ukraine and Russia. All of those dead are on Putin's head. And you see people kissing his ass in American media and understand that they are definitely the bad guys. Bad guys who love war and imperialism. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges, 
you got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.